We are back. Now, if you have a startup, you know it is friends, family, and fools who always give you that money. I wish I could take the credit for this particular phrase, but it's not mine. But we're trying to understand, if your family and maybe family members come to you and ask you for money, what are the legal considerations that you must ensure are in place to safeguard your investment? Patrick, before we took a break, you are enumerating the elements of how to invest with family members and the type of businesses or other business registration opportunities that are there. Please, enlighten yeah. us. So when you're investing with family, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, what is the business? So how is it registered? Depending on how it's registered, that means that you will have certain rights and responsibilities. And depending on how it's registered, that will also govern how you're going to invest. So let's take an example of a business that is a limited company. Okay. For limited companies, there are two ways it can be registered. It can be limited by shares and it can be limited by guarantee. Limited by shares, all that means is that there are a number of shares, each is valued at a certain amount, and if you want to invest, you pay some money, you get the number of shares that are commensurate to the amount of money that you've paid. Okay. Limited by guarantee, all it means is that the people who own the business have taken it upon themselves to guarantee the business for a specific amount of money. All right. So no money is paid up up front, but they take the responsibility to guarantee it should it be called upon by whoever is calling upon it. So and would there be documents for this guarantee? And can you request for them? Yes. All right. So that how does that typically work? So for instance, if you're a director in a company and you say you'll guarantee up to a million, does that mean you'll only guarantee the obligations up to one million shillings? That's what... So if you're going to guarantee a business and you guarantee up to one million, yes. then that means that if the company gets into some kind of trouble for any reason, okay. you are only liable up to the amount of your guarantee, in All this right. case, one million shillings. Okay, so of yes. the two, which is better? Is it better to invest in limited by guarantee or just ordinary shareholders and directors? I would say it depends on the circumstance, but what is more popular is limited by shares. Okay. And when it comes to shares, there's an issue of paid up shares versus okay. unpaid up shares. Yes. So when we're looking at a company, let's say uh, we start a company. This company that we've started, we take up, it has a thousand shares, we take up 500 shares, 500 shares. Yes. Of the 500 shares, we only pay up 100. Okay. That means that we paid into the company the value of 100 shares. All right. So in the event that the company falls into any kind of trouble, trouble or liability, then we are liable for the remainder of the shares that we took up but are not paid up. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's a very good thing to look out for. Definitely. But if you come to the situation where a company has to be wound up, because I can understand the legalities of do you have these documentations in place, mm -hmm. but then what happens if, for instance, the same company where you've paid up for 100, let's call it 100 shillings, mm -hmm. and yet your total ownership is 500, mm -hmm. and then you have obligations of 1,000. Mm -hmm. What do I do if, for instance, I'm a creditor to this company? What is my point of legal recourse? As a creditor to this company, you're only recourse will be to the degree that the company is able to pay you back. So okay. in the instance that the shares are a thousand shares, each valued at a hundred bob, that is a hundred thousand total. Yes. You will only be able to recover one hundred thousand. If your debts wow. are beyond the amount of the shares, as long as it is a limited liability company, yes. that means that the owners of the company are protected by that limited liability. Okay. So you will not be able to recover more than that value. Wow, that's very interesting. It just feels like before I make an investment, I really have to talk to you or to any legal counsel. It would be important to talk to a legal professional before you make an investment. Okay. The other thing that I would like to add is, as far as these registration documents are concerned, some yes. of you may be asking yourselves, how can you get a hold of them? They are publicly available. Okay. You could simply do a search at the company's registry. You could also do it through a legal professional to assist you to go through the process. Would this, this be the e-portal as well? Is that where I'd do the search for another company that I'm looking to invest in? Or where would I Yes, do it? you could do it on the e-portal. You could also physically go to the company's registry and make the request. Okay. So that you're able to see, one, how is the company registered? All right. Two, who are the directors of the company? And three, what is their shareholding? Okay. Yes. All right. That's that's fantastic. So you're looking, you're trying to confirm what are the legal documents. And I think you're, you're also telling us that at an individual level, as long as I'm putting my money somewhere, I also have to have my own personal checklist. Yes. Not to just imagine just because I have Safaricom Invest, I mean, I need to have that knowledge and comfort. Yes. Over and above, just looking at the legal documents, is there a place for, should I walk into this, or find out if they have legal offices? Should I find out who their management are? Should I request to see them before I put my money in this business? Is there an element of doing that in your legal work? So when it comes to due diligence, especially legally, there are a lot of different things that you need to look at. Yes. At the beginning, you want to find out what is the business and that we've talked about. The second thing you need to find out is what exactly are you buying into? So for instance, if it's a product, who owns the intellectual property that has created that product? Is okay. it owned by the company? Is it licensed to the company? Okay. So let me take an example. If it's a 
cake making business which mm -hmm. is very popular in Kenya right yes. now if it's a cake making business who owns the intellectual property to those recipes well, what does that mean what if okay. I, I run a company and I just got it through a, a social platform if you run a company and you got it through a social platform yes so give me an example of a company I mean, I'm saying a cake company. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm trying to understand when you say there's intellectual property rights affiliated mm -hmm. with cake. Yes. Elaborate. There's intellectual <laughs> property rights affiliated with the recipes for the cake. With the recipes, so okay. If what is setting you apart from your competition is that your cakes are particularly delicious. All right. Me as an investor, wow. I am investing in your business because your cakes are particularly delicious, which exactly. gi is giving me confidence that I am going to perform better than my competition in the market. Okay. So what I'm buying is your recipe for the cakes that is making them superior. Yes. I need to know as the investor, do you own that recipe or is it owned by somebody else? Okay. You are right that you own it. Is it an exclusive right or is yes. it going to be licensed to other people? Wow. So what I invest in you expecting, we have this recipe, it's amazing, we are going to corner the market. The next thing, 10 other people have received the license oh, yes. and, and I no longer so. have that edge. Okay, yes. that's interesting. So, so far we have the element of looking at the business, the corporate registry. If it's a cake business, for example, the intellectual property rights affiliated with the recipes. What other one or two considerations should you put in place as well? So legal registrations, mm -hmm. are all of the licenses in place? Mm -hmm. Are they Do they have the necessary registration? Mm -hmm. So if you're supposed to be regulated by a particular body or entity, okay. have they secured that regulation? Do they have any pending litigation? You may invest into a business not knowing that they actually have lawsuits but are exposing them to certain okay. liabilities you definitely need to watch out for that all right and pending litigation let's let's take a brief break at that just hold it at that we're taking a, a quick break closing bell is out we'll be back shortly